Hello and welcome. This is my solution to Bitcoin price index. As usual, your solution may differ from mine. If you would like to make any observations or suggestions, feel free to leave a comment below. Okay, let's look at our to-do list. Now, obviously yours may differ. So first of all, I'm going to pip install requests. That's the request module. I'm then going to import the modules into our program. So I'm going to import request module, the sys module, and the JSON module. I'm then going to get user input through the command line, how many coins they want to get the rate for. I'm going to error check. So I'm going to exit if the user doesn't supply an argument. I'm going to exit if the argument they supply is not comfortable to float. And I'm going to exit if the argument they supply is a value error or causes a value error. So after all this is done, I'm going to obtain the raw Bitcoin price. And within that, I'm going to save the JSON response and get back from that to a variable. So this raw Bitcoin price is going to be a dictionary. So I'm going to access that dictionary and I'm going to drill down until I get the rate in dollars. And then I'm going to calculate the rate and I'm going to print it to the screen. And that will be our program done. Okay, let's start at the beginning. We're going to pip install requests. So just copy that, paste it in here. And as you can see, I already have it installed. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to import our modules. So import so requests. Now I can do this in one line if you want, but I'm going to do it in separate lines. Sys and import JSON. So I'm just going to clear this. Now the user input, the command line is going to go first. So the user input is going to be at the bottom. So now we need to error check. Check these three error potential errors here. So I'm going to go if the length of sys.argv is not equal to two. In other words, it doesn't contain at least two arguments now. Our two arguments we're going to need it to contain is the name of the program, bitcoin.py, that's argument one, and then the number we want to convert, so that's two or one, four or whatever. So if it doesn't contain at least two arguments, argument one and argument two, then we're going to print missing command line argument. And then we're going to exit. So we're going to sys.exit and then give it an error one. This is the sys module here, so we're sys.exit. So again, if it doesn't contain two arguments, then you know it's missing a command line argument. It's going to close. Else, so in other words, the user did supply two arguments. Then we're going to go sys.argv1 is assigned to the float of sys.argv1. So we're con converting it to a float. I'm just going to convert that. Float. So argv1, what's argv1? We don't know. Okay, let's have a look. So here we're two, this is the length of two. So it contains two arguments, that argument, and that argument. Now that's one and that's two. Right, but in Python, like most programming languages, it starts at zero. This is a list, argv is a list. So it's containing two items here. That's why I need it to be two. But this is zero. That's a zero element. And the number here is first element. All very confusing. Right, so we have two arguments, this and this, but because it's a computer, then that's zero, so it's argv zero, and this, the number here, is argv one. So we have to change the integer, which is a four, into a float. So they could type in four dot zero, but if they don't, if they type in four, we need to change that to a float. So that's what's doing here, just converting it to a float and saving it back to argv one. So that takes care of this one here. So if user doesn't apply an argument, let's get rid of that out of the way. 
So now exit if it's not convertible to float. So we need to cover that and this together. So these are going to be together. So to cover that, we need to use a try and accept statement. So basically we're going to try. I'm going to use control and the right square bracket to indent. And we do accept. So accept value error. So value error if like you try to put in a cat as an argument, then it's not uh, it's not a float. It can't be converted. Cat can't be converted or text can't be converted to a float. So if that's the case, we're going to again, print. Command line argument is not a number. And we're going to sys.exit. Give it an error code of 1. Okay, so we see this needs to be moved again. Again, using control and the right square bracket. And I'm just going to use a tab here because it's only one line. Now, uh, the next thing we need to do is obtain the raw Bitcoin price. Now, if I go back here, there's an API uh, link to get the price here. It's a website. And if I go to hints or do a Google search, we'll see that uh, we have request documentation here. So here it says request.get and it's providing the link. So we'll try that ourselves. Here request dot get and I'll do um inverted commas paste in the link and now I'm gonna save that to a variable I could call it R I'll do response either R. Now if I'm gonna print that just to show what we get. Make some room run the program and we get um, 200 which is an okay which means that we successfully connected to the API okay that's that done so it says here save the JSON response to a variable so we're gonna to have to create a JSON response so it's a response dot JSON now remember response is just the name of the variable up here and I'm gonna save that itself to a variable I'm just going to call object. Now instead of printing this, we're going to print the object. And run the program. Now we see we get a whole heap of garbled. So now instead of printing that, I'm going to print some piece of code I found on the internet. And this basically just formats what this mess here. It just formats out this whole mess. So we'll try this instead. Ah, that looks better. So we have, in fact, got a dictionary. That's all this is. Dictionaries within dictionaries. Look, whew, it's cleaned up now. It actually makes some bit of sense. So what do we need to access? Well, we need to access the USD rate of Bitcoin. So if we look at our dictionary here, we can see working backwards that this is the rate. That's the rate of price for the Bitcoin in USD. So the rate is contained within the USD dictionary, which is contained within the BPI dictionary, which is accessed through the object. So access the dictionary and save to variable. So we create a variable called rate. We'll access through object. That's that up here. And the first key we're going to do is BPI. Now I'm going to silence that. And I'm going to print the rate. Okay. Okay, BPI prints out this dictionary here. That contains... The USD, the pound, and the euro rates. So let's drill down again into the USD. So up here, in caps, I'm going to do USD. And I'm going to print the rate again. Now we see the USD dictionary contains the symbol, the rate, the description, 
the float rate, etc. So here I'm going to drill down one more time, and I'm going to type in rate float. And I'm going to print this, and I'll clear first so we get the... Okay, there's our rate in float. So I said here we have to remove a comma, but we don't actually because we get the float rate rather than the rate. If we just got the rate, we'd have to remove the comma out of it, but we have a rate float, so that does that for us. So here we have access to the dictionary and we have removed the comma, so that's easy. So next we need to get the uh, user input. So the user's going to enter a number, which is here, this is the number here, say one, two, whatever. So now I'm, I'm going to assign that to sys.argv1, because that's the user input, the number is sys.argv1, as I specified earlier. So now we're going to do the calculation. So the number of the user entered by the rate. And we're going to save that to a variable called, say, amount. So we have the rate of the Bitcoin here, and by the number that the user entered up here. So one Bitcoin is that, two Bitcoins be double that, etc. So we go back here and to the hints. We have a print statement here. Into our program. So print, and uh, this is the F string, so I'll put in the dollar sign here, and amount is what we have here, and it's formatting it. One Bitcoin is $42,000. So we run the program, this time we put 1.4 Bitcoin, 59,000. And running one more time, I would do 20 Bitcoin. Boom. That is our program. So all we need to do now is copy this. That's found here in your normal page down the bottom. It's check 50. So. There we go, all greens. So thanks for joining me in this video and hopefully I'll see you in another one soon.